Uh, good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure to welcome you in our continuing, continuous educational seminars. Um, uh, today, our guest speaker is Dr. Yulia Matveyeva from uh, Kharkiv. Um, uh, uh, she already presented a wonderful speech on the uh, decorations on the uh, fabrics uh, uh, as depicted on mosaics in Ravenna. Uh, the recording of her first lecture is available on my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Elia Katlinski. And today, Yulia is joining us again with another wonderful presentation. As it's already past 10 o'clock in uh, Ukraine, I'm not going to delay too much, but I'm just passing word on to her. And please sit tight and enjoy. And thank you very much again for support of our lectures, for coming again and yet again. And please stay tuned. Announcements of our new lectures are going to be posted on my uh, Facebook page um, as they'll be coming along. Again, thank you. And Yulia, thank you very much for joining us. And it's all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again, dear friends, uh, for joining. And uh, today I tell you uh, about baptistries. Let me show you my screen. And uh, our topic is Uh, early Byzantine baptistry, a special space to dive into mystery. And uh, first of all, I would like uh, to tell you that uh, it is my favorite part of my research, which uh, you can uh, uh, see in my book, Decorative Fabrics in the Mosaics of Ravenna, semantics and cultural context. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to give you my point of view on uh, this research. It was really uh, unusual because all my life connected with textiles and exactly with uh, church textiles. Uh, it is a site dedicated uh, to my book and uh, uh, it came from practice. Uh, I uh, know as an artist, as a textile artist, that uh, all things in uh, mosaics uh, and also in, in church textiles, uh, firstly were just drawings and drawings had prototypes and uh, uh, my experience when I see all the time how uh, the uh, object comes from drawing and sketching uh, to the real object, to the material, it helped me to look at different way at mosaics and I want uh, I would like to share this point of view with you. And uh, uh, I believe it's possible to, to give other, uh, to give you my vision. That is why I show you now in the beginning, these little pieces of my works and exactly the process, how it was just in the beginning and in the end. And actually embroidery uh, is uh, very close to mosaics uh, because uh, in uh, mosaics uh, we uh, can't mix colors as in painting. Uh, we've got little stones uh, with different colors and we have to think about uh, optic uh, uh, mixing of colors. The same we've got uh, in embroidery because uh, each uh, stitch it's like stone in mosaic. That is why I am very close to uh, mosaics too. Uh, and uh, uh, about uh, mosaics and prototypes. Look, from the uh, 
uh, distance, uh, it is like a painting, uh, but uh, it's embroidery, the same with mosaics, uh, but clothes, you can see that uh, it is little uh, parts of mosaics of threads. And uh, now let's go to textiles in the mosaics. There are a lot of uh, textiles in mosaics uh, in Ravenna. Look, they are very natural. They depict it very natural with all details. And some of them we can recognize very easy, uh, recognize as real objects which have prototypes because we know the same in nowadays examples like uh, uh, curtains on the doors of church for example like here uh, or on the doors of church of San Dimitrios and Thessalonics uh, when we see uh, curtains in mosaics, it is very easy to understand what is it. Because uh, our experience, even today, pretty close to it. But when we uh, come to another object, when we come to baptistry, it is like mystery because there are curtains, there are textiles, and we can't understand what was the real prototype of them. Uh, and uh, actually, before uh, my research, uh, the point of view of uh, uh, the point of view uh, on these uh, pieces of textile around the central medium was like uh, it is just decorative pieces of textiles it's just border uh, of decoration it is decorative border to connect the central medallion with uh, the uh, uh, the second register with apostles but uh, today I am going to show you that if we understand these little pieces of textiles, we can open a big uh, tradition of mystery, of bap baptism mystery with a lot of peculiar features and uh, deep interesting details. So uh, let's start uh, to research it. First of all, I would like to tell you about the um, building of baptistry. It is not very big, you see, and uh, it's a octagonal building. When you uh, enter inside, in front of you, there is a baptismal font. It's like this. And when you uh, lift your head up, you see this fantastic cupola. At once, uh, you feel changes because uh, when you see, when you look up, you stop feeling uh, that building is very little. It's like a mystery. And also, these uh, mosaics are very, uh, very, very impressive. Uh, when I uh, have written my book, I started uh, to 
to have a lot of conversation with people uh, who uh, written me about uh, their feelings in uh, mosaics of Ravenna and about uh, these mosaics, uh, they were uh, more evidence uh, than about another. And uh, I would like to tell you some examples. Um, one uh, priest uh, uh, says, when I entered uh, in the Bab Orthodox baptistry and uh, I lift my head up, I looked up at Cupola, suddenly I felt that it is feeling of flying and uh, I am losing uh, feeling of uh, the floor and it was so so easy to fly that uh, I had a fear and stopped look uh, up uh, or uh, another woman for example she uh, she she's a researcher of uh, a Byzantine uh, painting and art and uh, once she entered uh, at uh, this baptistry and uh, when she looked up at cupola she also had this kind of feeling like everything is in carousel and uh, you start to fly like you are in tube and uh, uh, she told, sorry, I'm very old and I really need to watch this mosaic for a long time. Please, can I lay on the floor and watch? Yeah. Yes, and she had permission and uh, uh, she was watching in this position, horizontal position, this mosaic uh, for some hours. So you, you can see that it make very intensive, uh, deep impression. And uh, what is the secret of this? Actually, uh, this impression, it is just evidence that we are in front of very serious art. Uh, and uh, maybe you know that uh, these mosaics are um, in uh, heritage of uh, UNESCO. So they are not just very, very important. They are also so impressive that uh, they still now gives this energy. And uh, if it is so professional, so serious, it can't be that something is occasional here. But for me, it, it is questions about these uh, textiles around. Uh, in center, we see medallion with baptism of Christ. Uh, around him we see apostles uh, we, uh, who uh, are going to him. Uh, and we can see also two strange things. These uh, pieces of textiles and uh, be, uh, between apostles we see these strange plants, plants or columns we can't understand because they are so fantastic that we can't find something in our experience to understand prototype. So we need hypothesis and uh, I propose uh, you to look at this as at uh, curtains 
are the curtains of Ciborium. I know that uh, it is very unusual uh, to think like this because it's cupola, it's so big, could be big, could uh, be curtains so big, so huge to cover all cupola and why. But let's try to uh, research it. And first of all, we have to know something about Ciborium. Ciborium uh, for Byzantine time was usual uh, object and as usual it was with curtains. Ciborium uh, uh, had uh, antique meaning and antique uh, roots uh, but uh, all this came into Christian culture. And uh, in Christian culture, it uh, uh, kept uh, its meaning. And Siborium uh, is eminently image of heaven, glorification and triumph. There are a lot of pictures of Siboria, oh. but uh, there are uh, no, uh, there are not a lot uh, real Siboria uh, as evidence. Especially, we can't find Siboria uh, with curtains, with first original curtains now. Uh, <clears throat> and about Siboria, uh, there is uh, one more important thing. Siborium uh, uh, was placed just in force for uh, in important places. The, this meaning image of heaven, glorification and triumph uh, helped uh, helped to show to zone sacral space. So just four places where the first one, Siborium above altar. It, it, it's antique tradition. We can see antique examples. For example, here uh, you can see on these coins uh, vestals around the altar uh, uh, and uh, against the uh, background uh, there is uh, the temple of Vesta and this temple is depicted as a ciborium covering the statue. So uh, ciborium was uh, their model of temple. It was like a uh, symbol of temple and both symbol and model. Why? Uh, model uh, can, uh, can have function the same as big prototype. So Ciborium uh, could uh, walk as a real temple. Ciborium is enough uh, to have altar. And uh, there were a lot of shapes of Ciboria. Uh, they uh, could have different, uh, uh, different kinds of columns. Uh, could be more or less columns. Uh, the shape of roof could be also different, but the meaning was always the same. It's covering uh, sacral space. 
and uh, about shapes. Like here, you can see columns are, are the, uh, in uh, they are as uh, women and uh, the roof is also in another shape, but it is altar, unknown altar, and it uh, has to be covered. Or uh, this example, you can see that Ciborium is in absolutely another style and shape, but uh, the meaning is the same. It is above the altar. It is uh, Ciborium above a series sarcophagus and altar. Uh, another real example, the cover Ciborium above the altar in the garden of uh, Demetrius Octavius Quadrius home in Pompeii. When we look at these examples, it seems that uh, Ciborium is uh, just to, uh, is uh, building is architectural form to cover sacral space from, uh, from the weather, for example, because all of previous examples were outside. But if it is inside, will it be the same construction? And really, yes. Uh, look, uh, it's uh, it's room, it's interior, it's inside of house, and uh, the altar, the domestic altar, uh, is covered by ciborium. So first place is altar, second place, ciborium above tomb. And I again show this picture because it is both altar and sarcophagus. So it's tomb and it's covered. Uh, and uh, in Christian tradition was absolutely the same. Uh, for example, here uh, it is, uh, burial place of John the Evangelist uh, uh, in the ancient church of Virgin Mary, fifth century in a first tuki. And uh, it is burial place and also altar. And uh, we can see that there was ciborium above this. And uh, even uh, sepulchre was um, depicted as a ciborium. For example, here in mosaics, mirrors at the sepulchre. Uh, we can see that sepulchre is in the shape of ciborium. Uh, maybe it's just depiction. Uh, can we find real examples? Yes, we can. A ciborium for sarcophagus in San Marco, Venice, Italy. So uh, here it is the place for sarcophagus. And it was very, very old tradition. Why is the place of tomb uh, sacral? Because it is the last uh, place where a, a leaf person can come uh, to the border of death. And uh, from the other side, it's also the last border where death person can, can come. And uh, this border is sacral. Uh, it is impossible to cross it. Only God can cross this border. And uh, it's very interesting that people understood this border not as a line. They understood it as a space. That is why Ciborium is always like a little room. Even uh, stone uh, 
tombstone has uh, this uh, shape. For example, this Asian, ancient uh, tombstone with a ciborium above. Uh, it's uh, from our Arche archaeological museum in Palermo in Italy. Uh, it looks like uh, usual antique portica, but you can see there is space inside. Uh, this border is not lying. It is sacral space. And uh, 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 Roman people uh, uh, in their culture, they uh, got used to see tomb like this, like Ciborium. And Ciborium was uh, their symbol of tomb. That is why uh, even in catacombs, when they uh, want to paint it, uh, if, uh, their, uh, their subjects of Jvangelia, uh, uh, they used this shape. For example, here, look, it's resurrection of St. Lazarus. And now we know that in New Testament, uh, we read that uh, Lazarus, when uh, he was resurrected by Christ, he uh, went out of his tomb, which was cave. But for, for Roman people, it uh, was very natural to show it as a portica, as a ciborium, because their tomb, uh, their tombs, they had this sign, uh, ciborium above the tomb. So uh, after knowledge about uh, antique uh, tradition of tomb and ciboria, you will see in absolutely another way uh, this example from uh, catacombs. So, uh, for us today, uh, it is not very understandable. We don't feel uh, the uh, evidence of resurrection. But for Roman, it was very close to their visual experience. And uh, they felt better exactly in this way. And after that, uh, you will see in a, in a new way uh, depiction of uh, Christ under Ciborium. It's glorification and it's also going out of tomb. It's, uh, it shows that he uh, conquers death. And uh, just a little uh, ciborium, little roof above and two columns could give this new information. And uh, it was uh, also good idea for preaching because only on this picture it was possible uh, to talk about resurrection of Christ and about uh, his uh, conquering uh, death and his glorification. Uh, at that time we can find even empty Siboria. For example, like here on this sarcophagus. Uh, in the middle, in the center, there is uh, Christ uh, as a symbol and monogram. 
he is under ciborium and you know this meaning. Uh, it is, uh, it means he uh, conquers death and uh, he is going out from tomb and uh, he is in glory. And uh, it is sacral border which he can cross because he is God, but he is also uh, a human. That is why uh, all who followed him could uh, leave their tomb, leave their Siboria empty. So empty Siborium is a symbol of resurrection. Uh, this example I like very, very much because it's empty ciborium and uh, it's a resurrection because uh, Christ is above, above the tomb. So uh, it's glorification and new life. So altar, first place, tomb, second place, third place is a triumphal ciborium above emperor throne. Uh, emperor was uh, a person who was elected by army. Uh, usually after, after uh, triumph. And uh, it was, uh, it was, his covering uh, shows also that he uh, conquered enemies. And uh, all mi military people uh, know that, uh, that victory uh, is uh, not uh, just result of your skills, your knowledge, your army, but also it's blessing of God. That is why emperor was covered also Siborium, especially when he is uh, on his throne. And uh, we can see examples even with curtains. And after emperor, uh, this uh, depiction uh, had empresses for example, like this, and uh, you can see beautiful curtains uh, which are around of columns. So uh, it was third place. And the last one, Ciborium above spring and well, it was also sacred space. Why? Because um, water, especially in Mediterranean area, uh, it is a rare thing. And it will be uh, in place where God gave and not in the place where human person, people want. That is why it was covered. Here you can see the one of the oldest example. It, it is uh, 449 uh, year AD. Uh, and uh, also in language of art, it came uh, from life. For example, here, Ciborium over a spring. Uh, you, can, you can see very beautiful Ciborium and spring. Uh, under that. Uh, and uh, they were so, uh, Ciborium and uh, Spring uh, were so close with meaning that sometimes Spring uh, or chalice with water could be above the Ciborium. Very unusual example like this. Look here, Spring. Uh, water and it is on the roof of Ciborium. Why? Uh, what is under Ciborium here? 
and here is a, a canon table. What, what is it? Uh, in this table uh, was uh, coding, in, encoding uh, all the liturgy. And uh, in Byzantine time, priests could look at uh, this table and know uh, their way of liturgy. And liturgy is the source where there is Christ, where there is communion. And uh, it is source of life, uh, life. That is why we've got this symbol above. And uh, actually, uh, we know example like this from descri uh, describing Siborium in uh, Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. Uh, there was also a construction where uh, above Siborium uh, there was a chalice. And uh, from the chalice uh, went out uh, up uh, Christ. Uh, sorry, cross, cross, and uh, he was, uh, of course, symbol of Christ. So, Siborium uh, above Christian altar, it co collected all these four meanings. Siborium uh, under altar, because Christian altar, uh, it's sacral space. And uh, Christians uh, couldn't imagine how can it be if we cover uh, other uh, sacral spaces and we live without Siborium, our, the most sacral space. So above the altar. And uh, second meaning, above the tomb because uh, altar is also tomb of Christ, the place of his uh, death and uh, resurrection. Uh, it is also throne of Christ uh, and uh, uh, as place of resurrection, it is place of his uh, Con uh, conquer his uh, victory. And it is also place of the spring of the life because Christ is, uh, is on his self spring of the new uh, life. So you see, all four meanings, all four plays are together in Christian altar and in Sigori. That is why it was so, so important. Uh, and uh, Siborium and curtains. We remember that there is meaning of heavens. Uh, and it was about Siborium. But what about curtains? Curtains always together with Siborium had this meaning because uh, they, uh, it, it, it was so uh, impossible to uh, imagine Siborium without curtains. Uh, and uh, even when in, uh, even uh, when in depiction, there is just Siborium and uh, there is no curtains, they were. Uh, he, uh, and we can uh, reduce it, uh, reduce them because for all the people was usual that curtains were. Look, it's uh, also Siborium because there are uh, columns first, second first, second, and behind uh, there are curtains. And they are always connected with something from heaven also. 
look for example here with clouds and there are a lot of examples like this. And actually uh, their uh, textile and cloud, they uh, had a lot of common things with covering, uh, with um, being soft, a light, uh, with uh, moving uh, from air, air, for example. So they had a lot of common. And more detailed, uh, a lot of evidence about this, you can read in my, uh, in my book. And uh, for curtains, we can see these sticks in Ciborium. And uh, it seems they were so big. Uh, look, it's huge. Could it be curtain like this? Uh, and uh, really, yes. Today it's very difficult to imagine, but look, there is curtain on uh, the front of the uh, temple of, of Fortuna. Uh, it's uh, a Nile mosaic. Uh, and actually it is so big uh, that the construction of this curtain they took from sail. If you look here near, the sail has the same lines. Uh, they were to uh, make uh, this uh, curtain uh, durable, rigid, uh, to keep uh, strong uh, wind. Uh, and also the weight of a uh, huge uh, piece of textile. So technology were the same and uh, uh, it was useful even for church. And uh, the evidence to this we can find in texts uh, when uh, the synonyms of uh, uh, curtains ca are coming from uh, sails, from sails or verbs which are usually used for sails uh, are using for curtains. And um, it's, it's clear that uh, uh, they were close to each other because even terminology were uh, the same. So, curtains and ciborium together, and they are so together that sometimes all ciborium could, uh, could be created just from piece of textile, even roof. Look at this example. Uh, it is uh, uh, there a cover above Achilles uh, making a sa sacrifice. And above him, the most simple ciborium, uh, which could be. Uh, usually it was a uh, uh, kind of military ciborium. Uh, you see, it is fifth century, so it is a uh, uh, Byzantine miniature, Byzantine manuscript, uh, and uh, it's Ilias. Uh, so uh, it is like Byzantine artist uh, imagined uh, their Ilias. Uh, so, of course, they imagine they took uh, the prototypes from their life uh, and uh, their experience. So, what about this ciborium? The easiest. The easiest. Uh, uh, the uh, whale was uh, constructed uh, uh, constructed out of three. Uh, spears and a fabric placed on them. 
how did they do that? They just took three spears and uh, put it in ground and uh, covered with fabric. And uh, to keep fabric on these spears, they uh, used shields. You see them. It's not decoration, it's a useful thing. Um, if you imagine a shield from an, um, another side, not from outside, but from uh, the side of the hand, uh, there are two uh, loops, one little for hand and one bigger for arm. And uh, with this loop, they open, uh, they, uh, uh, they put it on the spears and uh, little loop keep tidy uh, up of the tent and uh, bigger loop uh, let uh, the, the curtain, the fabric uh, to be free with uh, these beautiful pleats, you see. And uh, even there are uh, tassels on, on this, uh, on this textile. So easy, fast, and we see that. We can uh, think that maybe it's just for military uh, or just one case uh, with this manuscript in Ilias, but not we've got uh, examples like this even in church. Uh, this mosaic uh, with San Demetrius uh, shows us that above him there is exactly ciborium which is uh, built only from a curtain, green curtain. It's basically the same uh, practice but uh, there are columns. And uh, we see pleats uh, and uh, even a little uh, tassels. So the practice was uh, usual and it came to iconography. Uh, also, uh, practice of tents, of creating tents, uh, helped to find uh, a lot of uh, types of construction of ciborium uh, from textiles. For example, this miniature gives um, us uh, very interesting information because uh, you see here lines, horizontal and vertical. Uh, and uh, it uh, uh, tells us that uh, this tent, uh, emperor's tent, is very, very huge. Why? Because only a huge piece of textiles uh, need this line uh, to make uh, curtain durable and uh, rigid. Uh, the same as we have seen in uh, sales and uh, uh, in uh, this very big uh, curtain. That everything, we look at examples uh, in art, but uh, was something in texts which uh, tells us the same story and uh, the same information. And uh, really, yes, uh, Bible uh, tradition uh, gives us a lot of examples of it. Uh, sorry, just a second. For example, here, uh, I put uh, here two texts, two versions, King James Version and uh, New American Standard Bible. They are a little different. 
about God. Who covers uh, the self with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Look, heavens like a curtain. Ciborium heavens and curtain here in text also heavens. Uh, it's uh, King James Version. And uh, in uh, American Standard, we've got here in uh, brackets, uh, uh, tent, tent curtain. Why? Why? Uh, if we look at this text uh, in Greek, uh, here there is a therein. A therein uh, puzzled us more, even more. Why? Because therein it is not curtain, it is not tan, tent, it is skin. Uh, and uh, only uh, text uh, of uh, only Masoretic text can explain what, what is here. And uh, in this place, uh, there is word yeria. Yeria, it is uh, textile of uh, textile of tent, and usually uh, it uh, uh, used uh, about tabernacle. So uh, it is not just cotton; uh, it is textile of curtain of tabernacle. Uh, it, it's very, very important. So uh, the heavens are uh, curtains of sacral uh, temple, the first temple, the temple which is God uh, told uh, create. Uh, and uh, after these words, look at pictures of Siborium. Look, you see inside it is sky with stars and the construction inside is like a tent. And actually the world curtains here uh, are the example in texts uh, that stretcheth out the heavens are the curtain and spreadeth them out are the tent to dwell in. It's from Messiah. And uh, let's look at the same Siborium from inside. Uh, and uh, is it uh, only uh, Bible tradition or there is also Christian tradition, New Testament tradition, theological tradition of uh, point of view like this? And uh, yes, there is Ciborium, uh, not only in Ciborium uh, uh, and curtains, not only in uh, uh, Bible texts, but also in uh, John Chrysostom uh, texts. Uh, for example, like this. Uh, John Chrysostom was uh, worried about uh, people who have to prepare yourself proper in a proper way to come in for communion. And uh, he says, when you see that curtains are rising, know that the heavens are opening and angels are descending from above. This moment is moment uh, 
before communion. Look, curtains are rising and heavens are opening. When you look after that, here, uh, you, you feel that it's exactly this moment. And we have seen that curtain could be so big. Just question about these strange columns. They are very thin to keep cupola. Uh, if it is ciborium, columns are very thin, very strange, very pale. But uh, uh, we have to know that there were tradition where there was no columns with ciborium at all. We can see, so uh, columns could be even absolutely decorative because a uh, cupola could fly. We can see that in uh, mosaics, uh, there are a lot of examples like this. Uh, cupola is flying. Um, there is no columns. And uh, uh, this depiction uh, we uh, can find in real objects in church, but uh, later. Look, the suspended uh, ciborium from Church of the Holy Mandelion. Uh, it's uh, the early 12th, uh, 12th, 20th century. Or uh, also in Italy, it's also suspended canopy above the holy table. Uh, there in the Cathedral of St. Alexander Bergamo, in Bergamo. Look closer to this. They are flying, and uh, uh, it is not necessary to have strong uh, columns. And uh, actually, there are reduced signs of curtains. Here, they were curtains, and uh, we see tassels uh, and uh, festons, festoons uh, from them here and here and here. And uh, actually, uh, if we uh, find parallel with uh, sails again, when sail uh, is in position up, we can see exactly the same um, a kind of uh, drawing, kind of uh, shape of uh, textile. I remind you, it's for example, like this or like this. It's exactly the same that we see in Siborium, Siboria. But there are other examples with the same festoons and tassels. And uh, <clears throat> there are much more, even much more. So let's return to uh, John Chrysostom. Uh, he uh, says about opening uh, curtains as about opening heavens. Uh, and uh, Uh, there are uh, there is one more uh, for me it's very important to show you statistic that it is not just one case there are a lot of them uh, this is old translation and uh, uh, it seems to be a very old-fashioned English and uh, I uh, created new translation. And I will show you also to his Greek text. So 
uh, John Chrysostom's says thus, when one sees the throne only of a king, one's soul rises up, exciting the king's coming forth. And even before that thrilling moment, you yourself accordingly thrill with all rise up yourself. And before you see the curtains drawn up and the choir of angels marching forth, ascend yourself to the very heaven. Uh, I show you this text uh, in table. It is old text, uh, new text and Greek. Uh, John Chrysostom is really Chrysostom because he, uh, in uh, his words, it's like a bell. He uh, again and again uh, says about rising up, resurrection, and uh, I put it uh, uh, in bold uh, to let you see. Enistate ti psychi. It's like resurrect, rise up, but also it's the same verb in Greek with resurrection. Uh, and the uh, anastasi, it's the same uh, root, but with other prefix. Uh, to um, underline it again, to highlight it, uh, this meaning. Rise up uh, your soul, rise up yourself. And uh, the curtains, before the curtains, drawn up. And uh, uh, here in old, uh, in old text, it was drawn aside and uh, it broke. Uh, all this meaning of uh, um, rising, 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 resurrection. Uh, that is why I put the curtains drawn up, drawn up, because in Greek, parapetasmata. Uh, there were a lot of uh, synonyms for curtains, and uh, some of them were kata pitasmata, kata. Uh, a prefix which says us about uh, direction down and para direction up. And here, uh, not just curtains, it's para pitasmata, so curtains which drawn up. And uh, the verb for them is also uh, which is rise up. <sighs> Anastelomena. And uh, uh, you also yourself ascend to the very heaven. Uh, anavene, uh, it's imperative. Ton uh, uranon. So you see that uh, it's very, very impressive words. Uh, so uh, not only artists created this line. It was also in Bible. Also, it's uh, um, con con uh, connected with Bible and continued in uh, uh, the theology. And uh, you see, now with this meaning, you understand that it's open in heavens, but in baptistry in baptistry. Uh, we know about rising uh, curtains uh, in altar. And here it's baptistry. Could it be ciborium in baptistry? And uh, is it just one example or there are other? And really there were other examples. Look, uh, it's uh, in Napoli. Uh, and uh, you can see the same construction, architectural construction. It's a ciborium uh, with columns, and uh, there are curtains 
which are raised up. And uh, here, curtains uh, are very, very beautiful. They are depicted with a lot of details. Uh, we look at them and we feel the weight of textile. We see that it's rich fabric with golden um, la, la, uh, bands uh, here and uh, in the middle and uh, with very uh, very beautiful bleeds. And what does it mean all together? Uh, look, We've got two uh, very big baptistries and uh, in the middle there is medallion with Christ and uh, with uh, rising up curtains. And uh, did really were uh, Siboria above their uh, baptismal font and really it was true look for example here uh, it is um, evidence of archaeology and uh, it is baptismal font and the versiborium and actually the earliest Christian Siborium was exactly uh, above the baptismal font. It's uh, uh, in Dura Europus and it's circa 230 uh, AD. The youngest Siborium uh, in Christianity. And uh, look, it is also uh, uh, had, uh, it, it, it is also with uh, sky inside. And this sky is very textile because the uh, character of these stars are like uh, in. Uh, uh, textile objects, as we usually see in textile objects, because there is a reason. Uh, the stars are very decorative, uh, they have their order, uh, and uh, they look like a, li a little bit like flowers. So it is sky which is uh, light of God's garment. Uh, I, I can uh, talk about uh, this uh, a lot. <sighs> this word garment in Greek, it is gimation. And uh, gimation, you know, it is a garment without seam, it's seamless. Uh, so it is also piece of textile, which, uh, uh, which is light of God. And God take it and uh, create heavens from this. So, uh, ciboriums, ciboria above the bapti baptismal font are traditional thing, very very old tradition. Uh, what uh, what did they mean? Look, there is one more example. Uh, and um, did they connect it exactly with mystery, with mystery of baptism? When we look at this uh, ciborium and uh, baptismal font, uh, we see this uh down staircase and when we remember that ciborium also is the sign of tomb 
it is like a, a staircase in a burial, burial vault. Do we have something like this in texts? Uh, and really, yes, uh, we've got words uh, from the Apostle Paul. He says, therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the death through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in units of life. So it is really going to death and then resurrection. That is the meaning of mystery. And uh, uh, in baptismal font, it was very, very uh, clear because uh, uh, you go downstairs, down the ground, like in burial world. And uh, these stairs, uh, the baptismal font had. And uh, if uh, we return to this uh, meaning in our baptistry, Orthodox baptistry of fifth century, uh, we find that uh, really uh, it is something absolutely new, absolutely new experience. And Ciborium here is very, very important. And let, uh, let us just imagine how it could be in that uh, time. Uh, in early Byzantine time, the mystery of baptism was just twice a year for Easter and for Christmas. Uh, that, uh, that is why people were prepared yourself during all the year. And uh, uh, maybe the mystery could be late evening or even at night. So they entered to the baptistry and uh, they were uh, very concentrated. Uh, maybe uh, they uh, kept uh, their uh, hands cross, uh, crossed on their chest like we do uh, before communion to show that we uh, died uh, for our previous life with our mistakes. And uh, they entered and they uh, see in front of yourself the symbol of Siborium. Uh, they entered uh, into baptismal font, they uh, dive into the water and they got in space without light, without um, air, uh, without life and under the ground. It was death. And then they emerge and uh, their first moving with this emerging. Uh, when you uh, emerge, uh, you uh, lift up your hat for the first uh, breath. And they lifted up their hats and uh, see these mosaics. And uh, they see that the heavens are opened for them because of these uh, raised up curtains. And how, and it is start of new life. And 
this feeling of flying which people feel even now and uh, also uh, next step is thinking and, and understanding in the middle uh, Christ uh, and he also uh, baptized and his baptism opened for uh, for us heavens and now they are baptized and for them heavens are opened and actually it was not only uh, baptism it was also uh, trinity because uh, in baptism uh, god shows uh, himself in uh, in Trinity first time uh, son uh, is baptized uh, Holy Spirit in image of a dove uh, was above uh, and uh, the uh, father God uh, evidence uh, evidenced about the son so uh, God opened himself for us with baptistry and uh, our baptistry opened for us uh, heavens also and uh, then the uh, see apostles who are examples of Christian life and uh, uh, a lot of rooms prepared with uh, New Testaments and uh, with uh, 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 armchairs uh, which were used uh, for episcopes and uh, etymosias. So all the heavens uh, were opened there. So it uh, made so deep impression that uh, people uh, might uh, remember that during all their life and uh, it helped them not only to dive into mystery of baptism it helped them to feel this new life with god and to keep this feeling this experience this mystical experience uh, during all their life because to be a uh, Christian uh, it is not easy thing so it was really start of new life and uh, can you imagine that uh, the little pieces of textiles uh, have just told us this amazing story. Now you see that even little details could open very big world. Uh, this is my favorite story from stories of textiles. And uh, actually it is on the uh, hardcover of my book here. And uh, if you want to uh, read about these more detailed with texts, with more illustrations, you can read there. Actually, I was written for that, <laughs> uh, to be able uh, to show exactly all evidence and all uh, pictures and uh, also not forget for myself because uh, it is the world it is a lot of information so uh, i think i believe that uh, from now uh, for you the world of baptistries will be absolutely uh, another 
uh, mysterious space. Thank you very much for your atten attention and being patient. If you've got questions, please. Yes, thank you very much, Julia. Maybe you can stop sharing the screen so we could see you. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Dear friends, if you have any questions for our uh, guest, you're most welcome to raise your hand or, or uh, and I'll be happy to turn your mic on. So if you would like to ask any particular questions. Um, uh, meanwhile, I do have a question, Julia. You were talking about baptistries um, in more of an imperial cities in, uh, you know, like Ravenna and examples in North Africa and uh, basilicas in Porridge, you know, that were very well endowed cities and great uh, bishoprics, great ecclesiastical centers. Mm -hmm. What were happening in your mind in smaller places, some on the periphery? Uh, mm -hmm. Would they apply the same rules or, or what, how, how would they go about it? How would they go about it? Did they, mm -hmm. Was the uniformity um, that you can confirm from your research or it was somehow done in a much more simpler way? Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, uh, there, were, uh, there was no the same practice everywhere because Walt uh, didn't connect it so close as it today. So it was in, impossible. But we can see even in little places the same practice. We can see Ciborium above. Uh, I show uh, just a second. For example, oh, sorry. in Tunisia, it is not central place. Sorry, where oh, it is here. Can't understand why it. Uh, I try like oh, here. It is not a um, big place. Uh, or here in uh, Israel uh, or Dura Europus. It is not big church. It is uh, just house for praying. But organization of space, we see it's uh, the same. So I think uh, they understood uh, the meaning of death and resurrection for new life in uh, uh, baptism mystery. It's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a beautiful example. I've seen uh, imagery from that before. Yeah. How about uh, also the examples that coming from Tunisia and oh, Algeria from Northern Africa, where you can see very uh, lavish, uh, rounded baptistries. Would they act in the same fashion or there would be something different about it? Uh, you know, that there won't be of a traditional cross shape or this elongated shape, but there would be more uh, as if of uh, unevenly shaped octagons with multiple set of stairs descending. I'm unfortunately I don't have a picture to demonstrate, but maybe you know what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, yes, I understand. And actually, we've got uh, baptistry uh, in this shape. It's a uh, uh, octagon. Uh, you mean this one? Do you mean this one? And uh, baptismal fonts uh, are octagons, and uh, their buildings are in this uh, shape. But uh, it is not, uh, there is no unification. I think there is no one, just one example uh, for everybody. We see very different uh, examples. And uh, in, uh, in details, we can't imagine this because for details, we need texts. We need something more than just art and, uh, quotation uh, from Bible at Christian theology. 
maybe we will know later. Thank you very much. I just tried to find the picture real quickly, but I wasn't able to, but maybe I'll send it to you in a private message. Uh, Franz, if, you have, mm -hmm. if you have any questions for Yulia, please, uh, you know, raise your hand or drop me a message and I'll turn your mic on. Um, if not, Yulia, as always, thank you for an amazing presentation. That's certainly uh, absolutely fantastic and um, a very rich and connection to the uh, previous, uh, you know, you know, pagan practices as they were and uh, adaptation, adaptation uh, and transformation uh, within, within the uh, Christian context, I'm thinking it's a very important part of the discussion. Um, there's a certain uh, continuity and understanding of holiness as we humans could express it. But uh, thank you again for uh, pointing this out as well. And dear guests, thank you very much for attending this presentation. If you'd like to, uh, purchase a book from Yulia or you can contact her directly on Facebook platform or I'll be most happy to provide you with her email so you can order uh, her publication. Uh, meanwhile, again, thank you very much for attending and I'll be looking forward to see you during our next lectures. Tentatively, our next lecture is scheduled for July 11th as next week is July 4th, so big celebration. People will be preoccupied with multiple other things but I'm very happy that you made it this week and I thank you for attendance, for your time. And until I'll see you next time, please stay healthy and be well. And Yulia, thank you very much for your time and your knowledge and expertise and God bless and be well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.